This week one NFL picks edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by MyBookie.ag. Right now, to honor football, MyBookie is offering up to $1,000 in free bets using the promo code SGP. That's right, $1,000 in bonus bets on your first deposit when you use the promo code SGP. Play, win, and get paid at MyBookie.ag. We're also brought to you by BetQL. The only app you'll need to make smart bets this season. Track line movement history, score sharp data, and use a powerful algorithm that gives out their best plays. If you're betting serious cash, you need a serious app. Head to the App Store or Google Play Store to download BetQL and make sure to follow them on Twitter at BetQL app. We're also brought to you by the number one daily fantasy football site, DraftKings. DraftKings is giving new users a free shot at $2 million in prizes with your first deposit when you use the promo code SGP during signup. And for a limited time, both new and existing users can get a deposit bonus of up to $500. DraftKings.com, promo code SGP. Last but not least, we're proud to announce we've partnered up with BetSperts for our annual free roll football contest. SGPN and BetSperts are giving away up to $5,000 just for making NFL picks. For more information and to sign up now, go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash contest. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash contest. Oh, welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green, and he is my partner in picks, right? Real Money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer Dog? Football. Do we get a song? The wait is over. Football. Baby, ooh wee! Football is back, and you know it's going on. We're going out to Las Vegas, gonna get real fucked up. Gonna bet serious cash on all these locks and crazy picks. DraftKings, DFS, MyBookie.ag, deposit bonuses, free roll contest, free cash NFL action. If we've waited so long, Ryan, it's finally here. The football is back, baby. Football, football, football is coming. Yes, weekend. Football, football even starts early on Thursday because you can't wait till Sunday for football. You got to have a little taste on Thursday. Oh, my God. I've already got my my head's rushed. The blood, it's going straight to my brain so I can pick the week one NFL slate. The wait is over. The oasis of boring bullshit sports is done. And now... We get to the water, the sweet hydration of NFL gambling. Ryan, I feel alive. Football. <laughs> the nectar of life. It's here, man. I, I, you know, we talked about this on the college show, but got a little taste of some action the past couple weekends with we, college football. We keep football. getting tickled because we got, oh, first it was week zero college, mm. and then it was week one college, and yep. then it was NFL DFS, and now finally the big boy the baby it's a baby fucking wheel man the baby fucking whale himself week one of the national football league before we did this podcast i was like well i don't, I don't know if I, did I do enough prep did i do enough analysis then i remember a i don't do prep or analysis but also I've three been months st- of staring I've at been the line staring at these lines come for on years on years and uh yeah man i'm just i couldn't be more excited and Sean, we, we, we oh my God. football. I know that you keep tabs on this kind of thing, but this is almost nine years to the day. Wow. Of when we started recording and making every pick against the spread. <laughs> every NFL game since 2011. Wow, Ryan. Are you we, getting a little emotional? No, not at all. But, I, you know, nine years later, could this be, could, could Eli bookend our nine years together <laughs> with another miraculous Super Bowl victory. Right, 2011, that was his first uh, his first run. Little stat though, Ryan. Uh, stat of the day: the Eagles undefeated in Super Bowls oh, following wow. odd years in the Carson Wentz era. You know, that's a beautiful number. Um, they're going to need it. They're also going to need him to uh, play the whole season, probably. Why uh, is all this? And we'll it, get into the, this c- this shit talking of playing the whole season or not. I, does it matter? The, the guy, the, it's next man up philosophy next on the Philadelphia Eagles. Yep, McCown, he's the guy. Sudfeld, you don't think Josh McCown 
if he, Josh McCown steps in, you don't think he, Doug Peterson, can scheme up an offense? Nick Foles, he's okay. <laughs> but he is he's amazing as a Philadelphia Eagle. Yeah. They'll, they'll be solid as a Jaguar. But really, right? it's a core. It's a group. We're a pack. A pack. The bird gang. A, a bird gang. I like it. Yeah, Josh McCown, not as good as Carson Wentz. But sometimes if a big guy goes down, the next man steps up. I went on this very podcast when Carson Wentz blew out his ACL, and I boldly predicted an Eagles Super Bowl win when no one believed, even myself. But I yelled and I screamed with the yep. Rocky music, and I made it happen. Great moments in podcast history. Uh, right before that, I boldly predicted Carson Wentz would tear his ACL. Another, and he another did. yes. All two right. two lead pipe locks. And Kramer, you're uh, – you're, did that did that trigger some bad karma with, What's you, that? with you predicting Carson Wentz's ACL? No, I mean, after the performance that you and your father put on, uh, was, stay tuned, Tom Green calling into the show <laughs> later, but after that performance that you and your father put on when Victor Cruz's career was ended, <laughs> uh, I, can ne- I can not ever possibly we did, accrue we were that so, much we were We were karma. pretty excited when Victor Cruz destroyed his uh, – yeah. Leg and ev- never walked again. Never, never walked again. But, Sean, we're talking about things that we can't control. We're talking about, about things that the listeners can't control. But there is, some, there is one thing that the listeners can control right now. Lay it on me, Kramer. Well, Sean, I'm going to use my deep voice because back for the uh, – we don't even know. I don't know what the number is, but back for the f- – I will say f- fifth straight year, the free roll football contest – Hey, guess what? It wasn't going to happen. And then Betsperts came to the table and they said, hey, guys, we want to build some synergies. We want to help your <laughs> listeners out. We want to provide a platform for the free roll football <coughs> contest <coughs> for 2019. And that's what we did. And, and you know what they said? Let's let's dangle that carrot. Let's entice the listeners because we have a pretty nice prize pool. Twenty five hundred dollars. Not bad. Weekly winner is going to score some sweet swag. But that $2,500 season prize pool, that can go up. And it's in control of you, the listener. If we get to 1,000, 1,000 people in the contest, that's not that hard. No. We can do that. It's going to juice up to $3,500. And, you got, Sean. You got Twitter. You got the Facebook. Whatever. You, you got, got friends, right? I mean, maybe we're me and Sean are your only friends. And if that's the case, that's cool, too. <laughs> we like hanging out with you, even though it's incredibly one-sided. <laughs> we want you to tell your friends because guess what? You know what? The best way to juice up a pool like this is get your wife in, get your kids in, yeah. get anyone in. It doesn't matter if they're good at picks because if we get to 1500 people in the free roll fr- football contest over on Betsburg, Sean, it's going to juice up all the way to $5,000. And Sean, we scoured the internet for a bigger, a bigger NFL picks contest this year that was free to entry. Couldn't find it. Couldn't Could find not it. find it. Not even close. So everyone else, they want to they wanna come to the table, but they're not quite at the sports gambling podcast level. Kramer, I, yep. I outspoke the music, but you need to head over to, bed, <laughs> head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash contest. Yes. All the information's there. And, hey, if you're one of these guys that maybe you're not too great with the old technology, it's not super hard. Even the database himself figured it out with a little assistance. And as you've said, the Betsperts guy is doing a great job shepherding people through the process. Yeah, tweet at Betsperts if you have a technical thing. But, but last thing. Yeah. When you sign up, when you get entered into, because you're going to go to more, you're going to go to groups, you're going to click that sports gambling podcast group, you're going to make your picks because all we're looking at is your NFL against the spread picks. You're going to make all of those every week, and and that's how it's going to go. And and if you really want some extra sauce, you want some extra insight into what old your your boy Kramer Centric's doing, <laughs> you can follow me on BetSpurts. Sean, I'm up to 20 followers. Wow, 20 followers. I know you're pretty impressed. Oh I am, God. I am following one person, Sean, and that's you. Okay, so a lot congratulations of to you. And just a quick update. We are just short 598 members in the free roll football contest right now. And Sean, last time you laid out a challenge, a pathetic challenge of getting 60 people in a 24 hour. I didn't think they could do it. I think the next time, the next time you hear from us Thursday night at the Legacy stadium, doing a live show, a live pregame periscope from Legacy stadium. 
you're going to be out in Vegas, hit us up because you should come hang out with us. But it, by the time we record like that. that show, like that. Sean, I'm predicting we're north of a thousand. Wow. I think the listeners can do it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you don't. What the fuck? Sean's I, making. Sean, I, I want to believe in the listeners, but Ryan, that's it, a lot. If you're watching us on YouTube right now, you'll see Sean. I don't know if he's believing. I don't know if he's believing the same want, way he believes in Nick believe. Foles. I, I don't know if he's believe. believing the same way he believes in Carson Wentz. This is for you, the listeners. Get together, rally. Let's get this goddamn contest up to a thousand people. And Kramer was on to it. Just sign other people up. Your kids got an iPad, sign them up. You don't want to sign up people who are good at picking games. That's competition. <laughs> you want to sign up dummies, patsies, losers. You probably have losers. a whole You probably work with a whole office full of losers. Not yourself, but listen, let's be real. If there's some losers in your office, send out that email. Hey guys, I know we're doing one where you have to pay twenty five dollars, but hey, why not do this free one? They're giving away up to five grand. That's if we really put our mind. Down. Everyone's got that guy in the office. He comes around football time. He's like, yeah. Hey, what do you what do you think about this Cowboys minus seven number? <laughs> you know what I think about it? I think you're hot garbage, but you know what? Sign up for the free roll football contest. And that's the other thing. All these all these free cappers, all these people on Twitter touting how good they are. Sign up. Prove it. Yeah. Prove Put it, your motherfuckers. Money where your mouth is. Anyone who's ever trolled us, and uh, we actually don't get many trolls. But if you're talking shit, hey, this is this is perfect for you. Money where your mouth is. Yep. Third party, independently audited. <laughs> I love and, that. Uh, Trans- zero to enter. Transparency, baby. Transparency. And uh, one more thing to tease for the live pregame Periscope, where I will be wearing a Jordy Nelson jersey. <laughs> Uh, one Billy Bahate has has challenged me. He said, "How about we raise the stakes this year?" Oh, there, there. The terms are not final, but there is talk of potentially a home and home bet, where a loss by me requires a trip to London for an NFL game, <laughs> where I have to buy the ticket. So <laughs> we'll we'll see. We'll see. the The terms are still being worked on. I do want to go out to London one of these years. Billy Bahate a- will be in Vegas. So if you're a, you're a soccer guy. Yeah, he'll be he'll be there for football, but fan of his work on Big Brother. (laughs) Uh, Maybe you're just a Billy Bahate fan or you like wrestling like Billy for some reason. Come on out. Say hi. Real nice of him to make time between his uh, WrestleMania trips to to come to (laughs) Vegas, meet some people. Food and uh, food and drinks on us. We already got a uh, nice group of listeners coming yep. out. Christian Pena will be there. Pena is going to be in the house. Cousin Mush will be there. Cousin Mush. Dick Olson will be there. Oh, a Dick Olson sighting. Dantabase couldn't cut it. Yeah. Pa- apparently he didn't. Pa- apparently he has uh, some things more important than uh, football, but we'll, we'll, we're not going to hold it against. Yeah. Him. So I mean, gambling and drinking and betting on football—that's not really his thing, you know. So. I don't know what he's going to be up to. All right. Hanging out in the library all weekend. Not us. We'll be in Las <laughs> fucking Vegas. Kramer, why don't we do uh, just do one more to get jacked up? Let's do it. Oh. Before we give out our week one NFL picks, time to recap or just do a, a season long. What teams do we like, where they're going, our eventual Super Bowl pick. How many times have you been asked this? Who you got winning this division? Yeah. Who you got going to the Super Bowl? Who you got for this? You know what I watched last night? I watched the NFL Network, and I watched their horrible preseason predictions where, not not surprising, guess who Michael Irvin likes to win the Super Bowl? The Dallas yeah. Cowboys. Uh, that is a disgusting act. So we're going to answer everyone's questions right here. Rich Eisen, I'm sure, is clamoring to find out. Sean, Quick Rich Eisen aside. Yes. Sports Gambling Podcast ahead of Rich Eisen on the charts right Whoa. now. Make sure you rate, review, subscribe. Get that heat. Apply that blowtorch to the feed. Sean, what are we doing? We're talking about MyBookie.ag, the presenting sponsor of the Sports Gambling Podcast. They got their own contest going on as well. The MyBookie Super Contest. Five picks against the spread. $100 entry fee. You don't need a proxy. You don't need anything else. I've already put my super contest picks in. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. And again, first place, $100,000. Guaranteed oh, yeah. $225,000 prize pool. No rake. No rake at all. MyBookie.ag. If you're looking for like a couple extra bucks in your MyBookie account, use that promo code SGP. First deposit up to $1,000 in bonus bets. Play, win, and get paid over at MyBookie.ag. G. Can I give a bonus plug to mybookie.ag? Sure. All out. Uh, if you want to have some fun, 
They also have a Survivor contest. Oh, $10 yeah. $10 to enter. Wow. Why the fuck not? Yeah, and if you really... Oh, uh, I, oh yeah, 10 bucks and five or uh, 50,000 winner take all. I might all right. It's only $10. You can you can you can enter up to 30 <laughs> times apparently. Okay. So Oh you're, wow. If you're a real degenerate. <laughs> I love how they have that set up. Well, if you're a uh, real degenerate, just click on blackjack. <laughs> wow. I I think anytime I mention blackjack on the mybookie.ag promo reads, we have to read some like gambling disclaimer. Yeah. 1-800 gambling if you have a if problem. You are a uh, no. Or hit me up directly, and I'll do what I did to Sean, which is just reply, stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's like danger, dude. Danger. All right, let's do it. Let's let's throw out some final predictions. Okay, should we walk through, uh, blow through the AFC? And again, if you want to hear more in depth, we broke down each division, win totals, everything. But uh, I'll plow through my AFC. Patriots, Steelers, Jags, Chiefs, Chargers, first wild card, Broncos, second wild card. And for me, uh, Chiefs. Steelers. I'm going to do it in my seating order. Oh, Chiefs, yeah, Steelers. That's all right. Chiefs, Steelers, Patriots, Jags win the divisions. Come at me. God loves Jags. Uh, Chargers and Ravens make the wild card. Sean. So I have Chiefs as my number one seed. Pats is the two. Steelers, three. Yeah. Jags, four. Let's walk through it. You. So we have. Uh, I have the Chiefs and Steelers getting that bye. Uh, you have the Chiefs and Patriots getting that bye. Of course, Sean, I have the Jags and Patriots advancing into the second round where the Jags will take on the Chiefs. The Patriots will take on the Steelers. Chiefs take down the Jags at home. Steelers, they shake off that decade-long baggage and take down the Patriots at home where the Steelers and Chiefs face off for a Super Bowl appearance. And, Sean. Yes. So what do I have going on here? I have Steelers. Uh, are representing the AFC in the Super Bowl. Sean, you have the Chiefs. Or I'm sorry, you have the Broncos. Yeah. The Broncos and the Jags advancing yep. out of the wild card round. And then, Sean, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm, you, I feel like you went off the reservation here a little bit. You have the Chiefs taking on the Broncos where the Chiefs advance. Yep. Broncos, what a bold prediction there. You, it's almost like you're forgetting Joe Flacco is the starting quarterback. It's true. Patriots will be hosting – the uh the Jags for the se- <laughs> second game where the Jags go into Foxborough and take oh, down the dynasty. Nick, Nick Foles, Foles has their number. He will catch another touchdown pass. You have the Chiefs hosting the Jags in the conference championship where the Chiefs will go on to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl, Sean. Uh yeah, neither of us have the Patriots. Maybe not a great look. This is the year it ends, Sean. Let's talk about the NFC. It's just no fun to pick the Patriots, so in the NFC I have the Packers locking down the one seed. Eagles with the two seed. Bucks with the three seed. Seahawks with the four seed. Saints. What the fuck? Saints and Falcons get the wild cards. Sean, you have. I like how you did this. You didn't want to go full blown homer, so you made the Eagles the two seed. Seahawks take down the top spot for you. Packers three seed. Falcons four seed. Saints and Rams get in. As you notice, Sean, I omitted the Rams from the playoffs. I think they have wow. the ultimate regression year. Moving, oh my God. moving on to the playoffs. I have the Bucks and the Seahawks advancing from the wild card round where the Bucks will head to Lambeau Field and lose to the Packers. The Seahawks will head to Philadelphia and lose to the Eagles. And then I have the Packers and Eagles. Eagles head to Lambeau. Not enough for Aaron Rodgers. FU mode. All in on the Packers. Packers head to the Super wow. Bowl. Sean, you have the Rams and Saints advancing out of the wild card round where the Saints head to Philadelphia and lose to your Philadelphia Eagles. Seahawks hold hold serve against the Rams where the Seahawks will host the Eagles in the NFC Championship game. And the Eagles do it. They head out to the West Coast and they take down Pete Carroll and Danger Russ. And the Eagles will be representing the NFC in the Super Bowl. So to recap, I have Steelers, Packers. You have Chiefs, Eagles. Play some. Give give us some reveal music. Maybe the UFC. I don't know if I have that. UFC oh my right. goodness! Sorry, I, I'm putting you on the spot. But I this is, this is the best I can do for. Fu mode ends with a full blown Aaron Rodgers Super Bowl victory. Where he gets his, I, I mean, 
all things considered, I, I love being on this Packers team this year. I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy a future. This Jordy ticket. Nelson's got jerseys got into your head. I'm all in. I'm buying into the F My Life tour. So the fact that I'm wearing it, it has to be a positive thing for the Packers. Sean. Yes. Chiefs, Eagles, Andy Reid getting some revenge against. The, oh no, Doug Peterson gets Doug his second Reed. Super Bowl. Two Super Bowls in four years. Maybe, maybe the people will finally say that Doug Peterson. Maybe he'll finally climb. Above, <laughs> maybe he'll finally climb above Sean McVay in the coaching power rankings with the second Eagles Super Bowl in four years. The uh, he needs to get above that IQ Mendoza line first. Or per- perception is everything, Sean. Indeed, that was fun. That was fun. Felt like we just knock it out because right people, it's week one. The season long stuff's fun, but you're not thinking about the Super Bowl right now. You're thinking about week one. You're thinking I, I, about the games, yeah, we the just, lines, the action. We just had to get it on paper. Yeah. On, 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 Contractually uh, on obligated. Contractually obligated. All well, right. So what do we do next? Before we uh, hop into these lines, let's talk about our good pals over at BetQL. That's right. BetQL. One of the premier betting apps. Betting apps out there on the marketplace looking to get a little edge a little advantage looking to take down las vegas i'm going to be out in las vegas with kramer sgp guys hashtag dgens only the only app you're going to need betql betql they already have some sharp data for week one nfl games i know i used it researching uh, my picks for this week sharp data week two of college football line movement BetQL all over that tracking line, seeing where they're going. Again, get the best number. That's how you win long term. If you're completely lost in a game or you're you're on the fence, BetQL they got a powerful algorithm that provides rated best bets each week. And if you're in New Jersey or Pennsylvania, you can claim exclusive offers using BetQL's data to make the right bets. All you got to do, head over to the App Store or Google Play Store to download BetQL. And make sure to follow them on Twitter at BetQL app. Let's do it, Kramer. Start talking lines, baby. All right. Well, Sean, as we've already said many, many times, Thursday night football, we, the Sports Gambling Podcast, will be doing a live show in the Legacy Stadium, yes. hanging out there afterwards, watching the game. Food and drinks, we got you guys. Going to get a bunch of, uh, I'm already looking at the Emerald menu here. Just, I think the move is. Can I ha- can I recommend the bamwich? Okay, well, I was thinking we just load up since it's going to be a bunch of people. It'll be easier to just order like a shit ton of apps and uh, and drinks and have that all ready to go when guys show up. So you know, you don't want everyone like dealing with their own separate order. It's going to be a pain in the ass. So any any uh, <laughs> any. Uh, Wait, you're not going to be our server. No, no, I'm just saying, I think it'll be fun to put out a big spread with a bunch of... Uh, yeah, I, I, I would assume that. You just say, give us one of everything, right? Yeah, there you go. All right, Sean, I, I feel like your energy's down. I feel like we need to get Uh-oh. into it. What are we going to do, We Ryan? peaked early. We're, our energy's <laughs> down. Well, we saw we saw our Lord and Savior, Adam Gase. Lord and Savior. He, uh, on top of being a complete psychopath, we, yes. uh, he, was, uh, he was all over the internet for, uh, you know, basically... Hitting that uh, that legal NFL cocaine, yeah. known as the smelling salts. So smelling what did you salts. what did you do? You said, "Hey Ryan, you know, be cool. <laughs> we should do some smelling sh- salts live on the on the show." So, I think this is the only way for us to get our energy up. So, are we going to try this? Yes. And if you want to see this, go to youtubecom slash So, so you think we just crush this? Yes. Um, from my understanding, you just crush this. Okay. Whoa! 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 Oh, Whoa! Shit. Oh. oh my god. Oh, this feels unsafe. God damn. Oh. I'm rocking. I'm rolling. Whoa. I'm going for a second one. Holy Whew. shit. My ears are teared up. Oh. You know Bring that I- shit to Vegas. Let's fucking Whoa. go. Oh. oh my god. I can All tell right. you I've never done that before and I might um where'd you Whoa. order these shots? <laughs> I, it's uh they may have just put cocaine in here. I, I've been of, I've been doing so I've been having some like congestion sinus problems yeah, and fuck sinus it's gone. is open up it, it and it kind of t- it kind of tastes Whoa. like when you get seawater in your nose but it's just like pumped up it's just air holy right. shit Thursday these are, night these things are awesome five twenty I think is the kickoff we have and if you're coming to Legacy maybe get there around five ish what time are we doing the show 
I think we'll start the pregame periscope you know, like 4, 4.15. Okay. Maybe we'll do, do like solid, 45 minutes. Solid 45 minutes leading up to kickoff. Again, follow it on Twitter at Gambling Podcast. So in celebration of the 100th year of the NFL, we are having two of the, what, the two oldest franchises, I guess. That's how they picked Atlanta and Gre- or I'm sorry, Green Bay and Chicago. Uh, Sean, this line, Chicago, it opened at three and a half. It's now Chicago minus three, minus 160 on the money line. Green Bay plus 140. 46 and a half is your total. Sean? Yes. We've been on this. We've been on this FU mode for Aaron Rodgers. And as you pointed out, the prep for week one is really just us staring at the line for three months. <laughs> I got on this early, and that's one of the things. Shout out to Betsperts, but when you make your pick, that is when you get the line. So we're not doing the standard. Everyone picks the same line. So if you like something early, get it. Got a little of this at three and a half. I definitely uh, would still love this at three. Yeah. Uh, Sean, I'll throw it over to you because I'm, I'm obviously on the Packers here. I'm going to be wearing the Jordy Nelson jersey. <laughs> I'm already on the Packers plus three. I love them for the season. And I love some of the changes they've made. Why am I wrong here, Sean? Well, I'll, I'll say this. You know, some of the computers, the uh, the, oh, no. the data heads are kind of are kind of leaning to Chicago. But to me, as a gut handicapper, Ryan, mm, okay. and my gut is now pumped full of ammonium oh, my and uh, smelling salts, and I'm, I'm <laughs> literally on fire. This feels great. The, Chica- the Green Bay Packers, to me, this is about Aaron Rodgers unveiling FU mode. Yep. Uh, I mean, Devontae Adams was giving a press conference and saying, like, you haven't seen what we're going to show yet. You haven't seen. And, like, legitimately excited. And now Green Bay normally plays their stuff very close to the vest, not really – talking a bunch of trash you know every once in a while you'll see uh Aaron Rodgers doing a belt check or whatever uh so I think they're I think they're really on onto something uh, another thing uh, I think Green Bay has gotten their defense better to me the big thing here and I, I think we just tweeted out a clip from the NFC North preview is that Chicago just too many regression factors that are just primed to hit the Chicago team like they lived off a crazy turnover margin that's really going to be tough to um just tough to repeat especially when you don't have Vic Fangio as your head coach or Chuck, sorry as yeah. your defensive coordinator Chuck Pagano less than Chuck Vic Pagano Fangio. is a drop off and I, I come back to a quote I heard uh, in the summer and this is when I made my pick I haven't re- I didn't reveal the pick until this past couple of weeks where inevitably wow. we started but this is in my head when I made my pick Jay Glazer uh, he was at an event and he reported this uh, that a bunch of the Chicago players, defensive players, are coming up to him, complaining about Chuck Pagano, saying how much they miss Vic Fangio. So I think there's something to it that maybe the Chicago Bears offense might actually be a little bit better. Maybe Trubisky does make a slight step up in year two, even if that happens. And Montgomery, who I like as a playmaker, I'm kind of on that with everyone else. I just think the defense is where it's going to fall off. And again, I mean, it's – Shame on me for not having this deep analytical preview week one where we have no real data, no real fucking data. So the data heads that are telling me that they like Chicago, blah, 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 blah. There Here's are, the thing. There are it's lo- Aaron Rodgers versus Mitchell Trubisky. And I know you said year two. I'm sure you met year two in the Nagy offense. This is year three. We, the correct. forgotten year of John Fox. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to hold that against him. But at the end of the day for me, this is Aaron Rodgers versus Mitchell Trubisky. I, I, Aaron Rodgers now his, has his own version of Nagy and a fun young uh, revolutionary offensive coach potentially because he once uh, was near Sean McVay and has yeah has some of that youthful uh, good looks that you I, love I, I think, coach. I think kind of the, what the data and the trend stuff what they're pointing to is Chicago five and one ATS in their last six games at home. Wow. Okay, that was last uh, season. Nine and two ATS in their last eleven games. It's early. But, it's warm. Not worried uh, about the weather. Yeah. Again, and seven to no ATS in their last seven games against an opponent in the NFC North. So those are all, those are all numbers that would make sense. But I, I think last year, why they were so good is they were exceeding expectations. Now I think the bookmakers and they're setting the line at three. That means they're seeing these teams on even ground, and and I just don't think they are. I, I think there's still a nice. Uh, I mean, yeah, the quarterback position is too big for me to ignore. Yeah, all day Green Bay, give me the points. Love it. Moving on to Sunday, Sean. Where where will we be watching games, Sean? Well, if you're in Las Vegas, come hang out over at Westgate. They have a place called Football Central. 
It's a great name for it too. It because really it is. It's like it's basically a movie theater. Um, but instead of one screen is like four gigantic screens and then four small screens on the side movie theater style seats. And, uh, they got a bunch of like cheap beer and liquor and, uh, you know, like wings and pretzels and stuff. It's an awesome place to watch a game. You feel like you're in Thunderdome. It's just the energy of watching a game at a sports book with fellow gamblers and just seeing the crowd react to stuff that clearly is just involved on the spread is it's really an awesome place. And, Far and away, my favorite place to 1,600 watch. 1,600 seats, Sean. 1600 it's huge. There's a balcony. Um, so, yeah, I would uh, – if you're in in Vegas, come on by. And if you're not, go uh, go on a separate week. Because Re- recommendation, too, if you're going to be at the Westgate, if you're going to stay at the Westgate, you're going to bet there, definitely find some downtime when things aren't busy. Go load up cash on the app so you can make those bets from mm. your seat. I know, Sean, you're an old-school guy, but yeah. those lines can get pretty long. That's true. So you want to be go, able to get the action in. And also, when you load the cash up on the account, protects you from blowing it at the craps or blackjack <laughs> table. Very smart bankroll man- management move. Sunday, 10 a.m. kick, the Atlanta Falcons. They head to the spaceship in Minnesota, where Minnesota is a four-point favorite. Minus 195 on the money line. Atlanta plus 165. 48 is your total. We discussed this a little on DFS. Felt like the number at 47 was a bit low. They must have listened. It's already moved up. Sean, Kirk Cousins, not a not a primetime game. Which side do you like here? Oh, give me the Atlanta Falcons. Ooh, all right. I, I am Should it be three? Is that what we're saying? Yeah, it should be three. And okay, so my my uh, real quick before you get to your my power ranking numbers for the Minnesota Vikings have them as a three and a half point okay. to four point home field advantage yeah, four day I games. See that. Four day games only. I see that. And you could make it you could certainly make a case that this is uh you know this is this is a perfect game for the Vikings to win. They're matched up against Matt Ryan and Kirk Cousins beats bad teams, but I don't I don't think the Falcons are going to be bad. I think the Falcons will actually finish with a winning record and thus uh Kirk Cousins against teams with winning records that trend comes in. And I'll go back to Kirk Cousins 3 for 13 in a preseason game <laughs> against the Arizona Cardinals defense. Just do that math. I don't care if it's a preseason game. Yeah. He just looks whatever. Uh, he's just not a guy I'm going to bet on. I I, I would really have to have some. They'd have to be a big dog for me to consider taking the Vikings right now. And I know they have a strong home field, but Falcons are very comfortable playing in the dome. What usually is the benefit for the Vikings is the offensive line they're going up against isn't used to playing in a dome, so they don't know. They can't deal with the sound. They're uh, you know it's, it gets too loud. But the Falcons they're very that that advantage won't factor in because the Falcons are perfectly comfortable playing in the dome. Shame on you for batting backing Matty Ice. He's just as bad as Kurt Cus. Here's my th- here here's the here's the one nugget I got. Vikings seven and one against the spread, and straight up in their last eight home games during September, they start fast, low leverage, low pressure situations for Kirk Cousins. I'm all over the Vikings here. I mean, I, I think you could make a case for me that they're the worst team in the division. So I, I, while I don't disagree, see what mm. I did there? Double negative. I think the right side of this will be Minnesota. Don't be scared away by that extra point. That's just the standard home field there. And I think what we're going to see, we saw my DFS lineup. I think we, we see a Minnesota team put up some points this week and maybe get a bit too excited um, I'm, I'm definitely going to be looking to zag on both these teams in week two, but Minnesota minus four is my play here, Sean. Sorry to hear that, Ryan. Well, we got it. We got to disagree a little bit, right? Yeah, it's good for the show. Remind me, are you going to write down your picks here? How's this going? My, you, you expecting me to do all the work next up? Washington <laughs> heads to Philadelphia. Oh, we will write my picks. Hang on. 10 a.m. Kick out in Vegas. One, 1 p.m. Local time. M- Philadelphia is minus nine and a half minus four ten on the money line. Washington plus 330, 45 and a half is the total. Look, uh, I mean, just straight up, 90% of the cash and the tickets are on the Eagles. This is a massive line. The line opened at seven and a half early in the summer. It's as high as 10 in some places out there in the desert, Sean, and offshore. It's just too big, right? It's too big to lay week one. I, I, I agree. I think, as we both predicted, the Eagles are going to be a playoff team. The Eagles are going to be a Super Bowl, Super Bowl contender. But, 
and Jay Gruden's hot garbage. This team might be hot garbage, but Case Keenum, he's got a little Ryan Fitzpatrick in him. He's got a little scrap where maybe, maybe he can help them overperform this number just by default. I can't lay the nine I, and a half here on the it, it would, game. If Trent Williams was playing for the <laughs> Redskins, you could talk me into taking the big number because How's Cox. Uh, Long. Cox. Cox is going to start. He didn't have a full training camp. That is something that I'm worried about. However, they do have Malik Jackson, Jackson, uh, Timmy yeah, Jernigan. Like that pickup. They have a lot, you know, um, you know, Brandon Graham, Derek Barnett. Like they have a bunch of guys on that defensive line that I think will be able to get pressure. Trent Williams just not showing up for the Redskins. That's huge. You need a left tackle when you have a guy like Case Keenum or a guy like Ryan Fitzpatrick or even Nick Foles. Like. Those guys, when they have their runs of success, it's because they have a lot of time. That's really the difference between a great quarterback and a good quarterback. A great quarterback can be um, succeed even when the offensive line isn't top notch. These guys, you know, your Case Keenum's are middle of the road. But when he had that great offensive line in Minnesota, these pass catchers that could get everything, yep. he could just chuck it up and he was successful. The Redskins just signed Donald Penn. He was yeah. 36 years old out of the league yeah. to start at left tackle. Great like, pickup. <laughs> Great pickup. <laughs> They're also starting Eric Flowers at the guard position. Yep. So you got a guy like Eric Flowers, who is literally a turnstile, going up against Fletcher Cox and Timmy Jernigan, Malik Jackson. I, I just think I think what's going to happen is the, the Redskins are really going to struggle to move the ball. Uh, and I think that will – I really I kind of like the under as well. This feels to me like a 24-10 uh, game because I just think the Redskins are going to have trouble putting up points. I think they'll their defense – their defensive line is solid. But, again, the Eagles' offensive line, that's one of the team's strengths. So if they can give Wentz a little bit of time, they certainly have much more talent as far as playmakers. It, it does feel like we – you know, there there's a world where the Eagles – come out and the Redskins actually play some good defense here and I think to your point I, I also kind of like the under and that's why I'm leaning towards the big dog so yeah I'm not laying nine and a half with this Eagles team I gotta I gotta see it first Sean I gotta, I gotta see them blow blow the roof off but we we can move on I assume you're taking Philly here. yeah I mean even you know even last year they beat them 28 13 at home and I think the Eagles are a better team than they were that year and, and i think you can make the case the redskins were a worse team um so yeah for them you think nine and a half is a big number but when the eagles win 28 14 you're not going to be shocked no, i mean uh, you know i uh, caveat i'm probably not wagering on this game i'll just they, enjoy uh, watching beat them 28 13 at home with alex smith at quarterback oh, are you saying Before, alex smith when he's still is better than case keenum yeah, I'm yeah i mean honestly that. this is one of those games i want nothing to do with because it just my my instincts say just stay away from the favorite here it's a divisional game it's going to be low scoring maybe i'll play the under if i play anything next up sean 10 a.m buffalo heads to new york to take on the jets where the jets are three point favorites minus 160 on the money line plus 140 for the bills 41's your total speaking of a low total i mean it's it seems as though both of these teams are stuck in a bit of the not quite good enough purgatory and i, I don't see how you don't just take the home team here are mm. you excited about this well it it, it does seem it does seem kind of i i was going back and forth uh on this because really yeah to me this is i, I think the bills defense could be the strongest unit on the field yeah i do I'm kind of torn because I do think uh, Sam Darnold is going to be somewhat decent. Um, so I, you know, I'm kind of leaning, uh, leaning Darnold, but yeah, the more I thought about it, that Sean McDermott defense and, uh, you know, the kid they got from Clemson, I just think they have a ton of talent on that defense. They're going to be able to neutralize the jets a little bit. Uh, Robbie Anderson, he's pretty banged up. So I don't know if he's a go. Jamison Crowder, though. And they do have <laughs> Le'Veon Bell. That that's the that's the X factor is that we haven't seen Bell in a while. I think everyone's just kind of expecting he'll have some rust, but he's also super fresh. It's that whole young. It's like when a boxer spends five years in jail. He's got that. <laughs> he's he's got that young. That wasn't good for Tyson. Well, uh, long story short, I I think I have less. See, the part of the Bills that I think everyone's kind of jumping to a conclusion maybe too early is that the offense is going to be serviceable. The offense was pretty bad. And while yeah. Josh Allen, sure, he could take a step forward. 
I don't know if he takes that step forward on the road in a divisional match. Yeah, you're right. All right, gun to my. I think the deciding factor is Josh Allen on the road. So yeah, give me Jets minus three. And but, I think we all, you know, I think we all kind of feel like it wouldn't surprise us if Darnold takes a step forward and and, and looks really sharp in this game. If I'm if I wanted to throw out potential storylines for next week, if if Darnold throws for like three touchdowns, it could be that is Darnold the next guy. He's he had a really good week one game last year against the Lions. Yeah, yeah. That, after that pick six, after that pick six. Next up, another early quick kick, Baltimore. They head to Miami where we, we love fading teams going to Miami early in the season, right? Miami is a seven-point home dog, plus 255 on the money line, minus 310 for the Ravens. Sean, this total, 37.5. That is insanely low. <laughs> um, I, I think the hurricane weather is probably going to pass. We love the trend of early uh, early bets on these Florida home teams because teams aren't ready for the humidity. Here's the caveat, though. Harbaugh's been playing hard. That motherfucker cares about the preseason. And I'll, I'll be honest, Sean, I don't know if I can fuck with this Miami Dolphins team. It seems as though they don't care about the state of the locker room. They don't st- care about uh, keeping good players around. Uh, <laughs> the, yes, the, Ryan the Fitzpatrick ch- is there, but I, yeah, fuck you if I'm taking the points with this Dolphins team. The trading of the left tackle was a, uh, was a horrible sign for the uh, <laughs> for Dol- the Miami Dolphins. However, I'm going to just say fuck it. I'm going to just – ride that Florida teams in September. Give me Miami plus seven. Uh, the thing that's that I think there could be a little juice left in this Dolphins team in the idea of everyone's calling them a piece of shit. Yeah. And there and it'd be different if Rosa was starting or a rookie quarterback. But the fact that Fitz Magic, this dude is just a he's a warrior. And the fact that he's the guy that's gonna throw on the pads it could go both ways. I've though. seen I've seen Lamar Jackson in preseason in practice. I think uh, I think we could be seeing shades of Lamar ja- Lamar Jackson playoffs and not Lamar Jackson that last five games. Everyone wants to just kind of throw that San Diego game out and act like it was a one time. Oh, that was just you know yeah. that was statistical anomaly. But really, what it was was San Diego was also the first team to play Lamar Jackson twice. So maybe San Diego, yep. aka the Los Angeles Chargers. San Diego Superchargers charge. Maybe they figured a little something out. I just hate. I, I hate laying seven points with Lamar Jackson. There's a yeah. lot of re- like on the my, road. My instincts tell me to take the Dolphins here, yeah. but I just want. No, I just think this Baltimore team is going to be so good running the ball that once they get up, they're just going to continue to be efficient and score more points than we expect. And to the to the point of uh, yeah, I just. Fitzpatrick, sure, he could throw for three touchdowns, but he could also throw for four interceptions. So, because uh, Sean, don't forget, Earl Thomas, yeah, he's going to be roaming the second day, uh, and, and maybe that's what it is: is that they they create some turnovers, they get some pick sixes, and just and just totally swamp Miami. I wouldn't, I would not be surprised. Yeah, again, um, ex- excited to but see you this. You don't need to bet this game, do you? Uh, probably not. Maybe a teaser. Maybe, maybe throw maybe Baltimore in a tease. Throw in that that danger, danger road money line favorite there. Um, what could go wrong? What Lamar could go Jackson wrong there? on the road in the sweltering heat of Miami. In the sweltering heat, we're gonna go a little out of order from your betting card because we're gonna keep it time, uh, time oriented. Next early kick, Sean, the Kansas City Chiefs. Both of our picks to go deep into the playoffs, they head to Jacksonville, which we're, I think we're expecting rain. The Hurricanes passing by. Jacksonville's plus four at home, plus 160 on the money line, minus 190 for the Kansas City Chiefs. 52 is the total. That's a very, very high total. Uh, I, would, I would probably play the under there just because I think that it's going to be a bit of a sloppy field. But – you know, back to that Florida trend, I think it's more applicable here because like we've been saying all off season, I think Nick Foles and his giant dong has gained the respect of this team where they're trying again. The defense is going to be balling out. Leonard Fournette, love him this year in season long fantasy. Yeah, love and, him in DFS. And uh, to that Leonard Fournette point, like the, if you look at their depth chart, they, the only guys they kept, it seemed, behind Fournette were rookies. So that to me – is triggering or makes or shows their hand that they're going to be having Fournette out there for all three downs. Oh yeah. So that's a guy is going to get a ton of targets, ton of looks, possibly even a little work in the passing game. The Jaguars, again, they, they held their own in Kansas city last year. 
uh, Blake Bortles pick six was really the difference in the game. Now you have Nick Foles. I think the, the opposite side to Kansas city, and I could build a pretty strong case for the chiefs. The, the case for the chiefs is pretty simple. It's, I mean, they're fucking that offense awesome. is amazing. <laughs> Andy Reed home up or Andy Reed, just opening uh, long day. rest. <laughs> Andy Reed in September, 15 and five in September as the chiefs head coach. And he knows Nick Foles, right? Like he was just in, you know, he was on the chiefs two years ago. So maybe he knows how to play Nick Foles and, and what to do. I I'm just leaning Jags here. Um, yeah, I, I think the Jags will be able to kind of hold their own moving the ball. And I think it, it feels like it should be a competitive game. And maybe this is one of the games where the, the, the spread actually does matter under three and zero in the last three meetings between these teams. So sprinkling really? a little weather. Yeah. Or- and, and I think the Jags, you know they got really good cornerbacks. I think they can at least. Are right, you want you want to you know what kickoff is? Ninety six degrees. Jesus. Eighty percent humidity. Well, maybe Andy Reid will break out that old pickle juice. That's what he did in uh, Dallas the one year when they had to open up for I- himself, right? Because he's going to struggle <laughs> to get through that day. That's uh, hot. He probably just ate a ton of pickles and they had all this juice <laughs> left over. And they're like, "What's this for?" He's like, "Oh, uh, guys are supposed to drink this juice. It, uh, it helps you with your hydration." Like, um. really, Coach Reid? Yeah, I, I uh, give me the Jags as well. Next up, Sean, Tennessee heads to Cleveland, where this is the uh, I think the the two two ends of the hype machine on the sports gambling podcast here. Cleveland laying five and a half, minus two forty five on the money line. Tennessee plus two hundred five, forty five and a half is the total. Sean, we've been shitting on Tennessee all off season. Yes. we're also shitting on the Cleveland hype. I know we're we're at a, two bet against teams, but uh, the line has to be a bit inflated, right? Just based on the hype, you doesn't would, that make you, you would, think you I gotta would, take the Titans here? You would think, but I I was surprised this wasn't seven. Like all really? the public money, all the public action on Cleveland, Marcus Mariota on the road. Why is it not a little bit higher? Well, and you have uh, the the Titans will be missing their left tackle. That's Huge. not good when you're going against a defensive line that projects Huge. to be quite nice in this matchup. Um, I think this is more of a, a conversation about Tennessee. Tennessee Mariota without the left tackle I think that's going to be trouble and while Cleveland is yet to do a goddamn thing and they are definitely the paper champs of the offseason I think they're gonna there's gonna be excitement I think they're gonna win this game big and that's fine because I can't wait to fade them in the future I'm laying the points with Cleveland here Cleveland two and five ATS in their last seven games uh Nine wins over the last Cleveland, three seasons, right? Cleveland, two seasons. five and two ATS in their last seven games. And again, that that Cleveland run dated back to the second half of last season where they're kind of exceeding expectations. The expectations are high here, but I just don't think that is reflected in the price yet. If you're talking seven, seven and a half, then I'm, then I'm looking to the Titans. But anything under six, uh, why are you not on the Cleveland Browns here? I, Jesus Christ, that felt so weird saying that. <sighs> why are you not on the Cleveland Browns? Cause they have a history of being Cleveland. The thing is bet the Browns week one. And then, well, I think if anything, I'm, I'm maybe I get involved in a teaser here uh, because I, again, my, my numbers instincts see this number. Oh, Vegas is clueless on this. Oh, Mariota's not going to have his left tackle. Oh, Tannehill's breathing down Mariota's throat. This has potential to be a weird spot for Tennessee. I just don't like anything about this Tennessee team, but they're probably the right size from a num- number perspective, from a market, like looking at the number, it probably should be closer to four, yeah. four and a half. But I'm going to lay the chalk here because I think, I think Cleveland balls out. I don't think it's a super high scoring game. More of a conversation, like I said, more of a conversation about how Tennessee's not that good. Last of the early kick, Sean, the Los Angeles Rams going East for that early kick on what uh, does Carolina have long turf too? We believe Carolina might also have long turf. Carolina is right. Carolina, let me, let me check this line because it's been bouncing around. Carolina is now back to three, uh, a three-point home dog, Sean, minus 140 on the money line, plus 120 for the Panthers. 50 is your total. That seems like a big total. I know you're, yeah, you're, you're going to tell me Cam Newton, fade Cam Newton. Yeah. Give me the Carolina Panthers here. Oh, love it. Love you being on the Carolina Panthers. Love you backing. Super Bowl hangover. Oh, Our boy yeah. Christian Pina is talking about this. You want to fade the team that lost the Super Bowl. Oh, you know what else you want to fade? Rams are getting 78% of the tickets, and the Panthers are getting over two-thirds of the cash. Sean, what does that tell us? Danger. Trap line. Trap line. 
I am I'm on this Panthers team. I don't want to get excited. This isn't a lock or anything, but I'm definitely going to be on the dog here. I think I think your boy Sean McVay, a little bit of a hangover. Jared Goff just got paid. We don't know what that means. He might be off partying on Jared Goff sucks island right now. <laughs> Showing all the haters what's up. Man, that's a lot of guaranteed money for Jared Goff. Sean, yeah. tell me why I'm wrong. Well, first off, if you want to. Uh, first off. Cam Newton. Okay. Cam Newton. You don't like Cam Newton? No, I don't. And when the uh, when the Patriots lost in 2017, they came back and covered week one uh, against the, against the Texans. Lane six, they beat them twenty seven pa- to twenty. Patriots are a bit of a different animal. That is true, and you know what's a bit of, of a different animal? Cam Newton, dude, his <laughs> his shoulder. He's had this throwing shoulder repaired twice. You saw how wonky that throwing shoulder was. That they shut him down those last two games. Once they got eliminated from the playoffs, they're like, this shoulder is fucking crazy. And the whole off season, it, I've, you just watch the guy throw the ball. That's not a guy who can win the National Football League against a quality team like. Sean McVay and the Rams. Do I think the Rams people are penciling them in, uh, you know, pretty far? Yeah. But like we said in the preview, I got them making the playoffs, winning a game or so, but I don't think they're, uh, I just like them situation. Cam here. Newton, not on the injury report. And you'll be happy to watch see him this. walk, Cam, watch him walk. Cam Newton beat reporters are saying does not look limited. Cam Newton. Also, that's, that's great. This is breaking news, Sean. Cam Newton just set a Guinness World Record by catching 51 one-handed catches in one minute. You can see how dedicated he is to the season. Oh, my God! Well, hashtag me. He can catch a ball. He can't throw a <laughs> ball. And that's, that's – Why is he setting kid. Guinness – why is he catching one-handed passes right now? Imagine if he broke things, his finger. Yeah, of all the things to work on. Dumbass. I'm and still taking Carolina plus three. He was he was quote unquote healthy last year, but did watch those games. Did that guy look right at all? And so you saw what he did last year. You he throw was not another, healthy last year. You throw sure. another off season shoulder uh, surgery. I I just don't see it from Cam. I like it though. He topped uh, Odell Beckham's previous record, so wow. we we support that. Stick it to Odell. I like that. Stick it to Odell. I'm just I, I'm scared of this uh, Carolina Panthers team with with fucking. I just don't see Cam Newton coming out and balling, balling out. Jared Goff uh, with Cooper Cup back. I mean, Todd Gurley's going to be the healthiest he's going to be week one. The Hangover, baby. Is still, I, I like. How many I like points Wade, did he score last time? We I saw like him? Wade Phillips against Cam Newton. Yeah, but Ron Rivera and Bill Belichick are kind of different as far as coaching things up. Oh, yeah. Well, Belichick, not quite the uh, analytics guy that Ron Rivera is. So. I could see that there. Ryan, you don't need analytics to know that I won $200,000 on DraftKings.com. Just a reminder, because football is back, DraftKings, they're back too. Leader in one day fantasy football. we got a huge week one contest this Sunday. You don't want to miss it. Kicking things off. They're giving users a free shot at $2 million of prizes with your first deposit when you use the promo code SGP right two million dollars in prizes draft your lineup and feel the sweat like never before every run every throw and catch i know it firsthand I mean more with the drafting lineups on the line especially if you're if you're in that deep money and you're just going up and down it gets scary up there it's scary at the top ryan if you haven't played DraftKings before wow simple just draft your lineup stand in the salary cap and uh yeah you don't need to deal with the waiver wire all that other crap plus if you're already a DraftKings guy like myself, existing users can get a deposit bonus up to $500. That's right. Minimum deposit and rollover requirements do apply. But again, download that DraftKings app. Use the promo code SGP for your free roll or get that sweet deposit bonus. Don't miss that extra week one deposit bonus. That is essential. Enter SGP to get a free shot at $2 million over at DraftKings.com. Heading to the afternoon kick, Sean. I do like I do like when we don't have the bye weeks and we get a nice full slate. Five games in the afternoon. 105 West Coast kicked. Cincinnati heads to Seattle, where Seattle is a nine and a half point favorite, minus four ten on the money line. 
Cincinnati plus 330. Excuse me, Sean. 44 is your total. Uh, is there much to talk about here? Cincinnati, um, talk about teams that no one expects anything from this year. This line is definitely inflated, right? Yeah. But and it's still Seattle at home. Yep. They just got Jadavian Clowney. He's going to play. Not much to learn. He knows how to rush the passer. I got to have one of these big numbers, right? Yeah, and maybe I, I've i been going back and forth on this game as well. I'm going to actually take uh, Cincinnati plus nine and a half. I think the fact that I'm just, to me, oh, this that's is so gross. It is, it is disgusting. That is a disgusting act. But I'll make my case for the Bengals here, and that is Joe Mixon. I think Joe Mixon is going to have a huge season. Yep. And I think Joe Mixon is going to be able to help the offense stay out on the field, get some first downs, keep a couple drives alive. And we haven't seen that Zach Taylor offense. So when you bring in a new guy, uh, a new offensive coordinator, I like taking these new offensive coordinators in the same way I like LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers, not to the same degree, but I do think they're going to show some looks that might be uh, a tough matchup for Seattle, or they might have to adjust just enough. That'll keep them in this game. Every time I hear LaFleur, I think of the movie Dodgeball. Um, <laughs> yeah, I look, I think this is another case where I was happy taking Baltimore as the fa the big favorite because I think their running game will be good enough to get it done when they need to score those points down the stretch and just wear out the other team. Uh, Miami, in that case. Cincinnati, similarly shitty run defense. And I think, as we discussed, this Seattle team is going to want to run the rock. Part of the reason we don't love Russell Wilson this year in fantasy is they're going to run the rock. Rashad Penny... Chris Carson, uh, I, did, they don't I did start. I did start Tyler Lockett, so I think he could have a couple big plays. But they don't have much else to throw it to. Yeah, D, D, Metcalf is a, apparently practicing, maybe going to play. Uh, they re-signed Jerron Brown, who could be their their number two receiver. They cut him uh, and then re-signed him. Uh, a lot of reasons to take Cincinnati here, but I'm going to take Seattle. I think Seattle gets up. I think their defense is better than advertised. It's Pete Carroll, and I think this Cincinnati team is going to show that. Uh, they need AJ Green. Uh, their offensive line is still kind of garbage. I, I think I, I think there's some potential here to score a couple points, but to me, this feels like Seattle wins something like 27 to 10. Uh, a little bit similar to your handicap of the Eagles game. I just think Seattle too yeah, much. And maybe running that, game too strong. Maybe that's it. But I, I guess I would say, yeah. No, you're right. It, it's not. Uh, I just feel like I got to be on one of these big dogs, and I already took the Eagles, so. I, I like your law of averages, Sean. Next up, one works. another 105 kick at the beautiful StubHub Center or whatever the fuck they're calling it now. Uh, Decker and Associates. The Chargers. This this Dignity line, Health Sports Dignity Park. Dignity Health Ryan. Sport. What is it called? Dignity Health Sports Park. Sports Park. What is a fucking sports park? They can't even call it a stadium. <laughs> Chargers. Stadiums they have 25,000 <laughs> seats or more. They opened as three. Th then Andrew Luck decided he was a giant pussy and retired. That This bounced all the way up to almost 10. Yeah, it's now, I loved Colts at nine and a half. It's now sitting at Chargers minus six and a half, minus two seventy five on the money line, plus two thirty five for the Colts. Forty five is the total. Sean, let's be real for a second. Yeah. Strangely, with all the news about the Chargers missing their left tackle, Derwin James is out. Yep. Melvin Gordon is is holding out. So many people on the flip side are like, yeah, I still love this Colts roster. Yeah, I think this Colts team can compete without Andrew Luck. Jacoby Brissett, blah, blah, blah. He's been here a year. He knows the offense. The front office is saying we really like our roster this year. All horse shit. Give me the Chargers minus six and a half. As Decker pointed out, this is one of their few home games, actual home games this year. San Diego, Super Chargers. Charge. Gordon, not there. They're going to be balling out. I love this number less than a touchdown. Give me the Chargers. Wow. Yeah. I, Don't you think it's flipped? touchdown is it, – it is – that's what's crazy about this news cycle. It's like the reverse fade. It's like the, yeah, it's like too many people have gotten cute on, on the Colts and it's gone the other way. Uh, oh, the great roster, Sean. They have a great, you know what matters Eckler, in the National Eckler, Football League? The quarterback position. Eckler's still really good. Um, Justin Jackson, f former teammate of, for of sports gambling podcast writer Eric Olson told us he was the baddest football player he's ever <laughs> played with. I love that endorsement. I don't think they miss Melvin Gordon at all in this game. I think Hunter Henry gets it done. I think Keenan Allen is being slept on in fantasy. 
Yes, it'd be I think nice. there is there is some factor that maybe the Colts were alleying. They've had a shitty offensive line before. Philip Rivers will get it done. I can't I can't have the same level of confidence for Jaco- Jacoby Brissett, and and what projects to be a solid roster. But I need to see it. I'm laying the points. Yeah. Next up, Sean, the game everyone's clamoring for. Detroit heads to Arizona, where we will see Matt Stafford take on a shit team, and we love those matchups. Detroit minus two and a half. Arizona plus 120 on the money line. Detroit minus 140. 47 is the total. You know, Matt Stafford beats bad teams. And this Cardinals team, as much as it pains our uh, sighted editor, Ryan McKee, they're probably going to be a bad team. Sorry, 46 and a half is the total. Sean, correct me if I'm wrong, but with the way this Arizona team is playing offense or not playing offense, uh, doesn't this total? I mean, yes, Detroit will have to score a lot of these points. Total feels a bit low. I love this Detroit spot. Do- a road team on the road in another dome. Love that aspect of it. I will be considering doing a uh, mm. Stafford Hawkinson stack in DraftKings. Oh, both. V- I listened to that. I, f- I feel like I've talked about this game nine different times. It's too. It's too much. I've listened to the. I listened to the preseason game between the Vikings and the Cardinals. This Cardinals team is not good at tackling. Fundamentally. Uh, they're kind of lost on defense. Now, if you're a Cardinals fan, you're talking to yourself, uh, Kyler Murray just balling out and based on what Cliff, Cliff showing a bunch of stuff that they didn't show in the preseason, but there was basic execution stuff, the snap, uh, the clapping and, and getting called for a false start, not being able to get the, the ball to the receivers. Kyler Murray is a work in progress. Uh, and I don't think he's just going to be able to beat the lions who again, not super high on, not a, not a Matt Patricia head, but I think this is a good situation for the Lions. Here's what I saw when I was watching. I I try to watch as many as the, of the, uh, the shortcuts for the preseason games as possible. Wow. When I saw Arizona play the first week of the preseason, it was like, oh, this is interesting. The second, the second team started showing a rush or moving pre-snap. He has no idea what to do. Yeah. This team is going to have no – I will be shocked if Arizona, Arizona breaks 17 points. I will be absolutely shocked. Detroit laying less than a field goal. I get it. Ryan, you're supposed to take the two and a half, lay the three and a half. I'm going against my, my, my manifesto, but holy shit. And I would probably lean over here too because I think Arizona can get 14 or 17, and I, and I think Detroit is going to absolutely murder Cliff Kim- They Kingsbury. could put up 35 points. And we're, He was letting up the – he was getting blown out in the Big 12. We're, we're, we're forgetting um, how much we hate Matt Patricia, but I think Patricia has a nice day here. Detroit, lay the points all day. Anything anything to add? No? Arizona dog shit? Let's move yeah. on. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I think Hawkinson is a, is a sneaky uh, DFS guy. I really like the chemistry him and uh, Stafford have, and he's he's super low-priced, and he's a it's, red zone guy. So. It's a great name, too. A lot of potential. Great football name. If only Madden was here to enjoy that football name. He's one of those guys who will get penetration. I'm sure he's out on the cruiser somewhere. Next up, <laughs> San Francisco heads to Tampa Bay. Another Florida team hosting a team from the West Coast. Uh, this is a pick 'em, Sean. Minus 110 on the money line. 50 is the total. Uh, one, the total's probably a bit high with all that fucking humidity they're going to have to deal with down there in Tampa. But secondly, why, why? I like Shanahan. I think he's a great coach. And I'm going to kick it to you, Sean, but why the fuck is this team getting respect and not catching three points here? I don't get it. I, I, again, this is Jimmy G. Jimmy G. I, he didn't look great in the preseason. He didn't look – I was uh, – we were ahead of the Jimmy G hype train saying he sucked early and often. We were on and that he was, suck He was one early. and two last year before he blew out his ACL. The narrative for this 49ers team has just been, oh, hey, he just – yeah, they blew out his ACL, but they're going to pick up right where they left off. Newsflash, I don't know if Nick Mullins is worse than Jimmy Garoppolo. Like, Shanahan got a lot out of Nick Mullins. His yards per attempt was like seven and a half. Like, the dude was competent and running that offense. I don't think if if you're betting the 49ers and backing them just on the idea of like, well, now they got uh, Jimmy G going and their offense is going to be so much better. I don't know about that transition. And what I do know about uh, is Bruce Arians is a solid fucking coach. You saw it when he took over for Chuck Pagano. You saw it when he went down to Arizona and cleaned up that dog shit franchise. Yep. Like he's just He's a fixer. He is. He's the Ray Donovan of uh, dog shit NFL teams and he if anyone can save or fix this Tampa Bay Bucks, it's Bruce Arians. I'm very high on the Bucks for the season and I'm yep. very high on Bruce Arians. 
They have talent too. Jameis Winston with Bruce Arians. That is the best case scenario. You're giving Bruce Arians a number one pick overall, a guy who's had bad coaching and kind of a lost soul. That's a perfect matchup for Bruce Arians. Bruce Arians can talk his language. He has a fun hip hat that the players love. The guy is a tough, yeah. gritty coach. He ate paint for Christ's sake to toughen himself up. He speaks Jameis's language. He gets it. I'm sure. I'm sure if Ar Arians grew up in this generation, he would have considered grabbing the the uh, the, the the pussy of an Uber driver as well. <laughs> I mean, like you well. said, he chewed paint. And and I think this is an absolute bet on team versus a bet against team for us, the sports gaming yeah. podcast. Get ahead of the market here. I, I don't get the Niners will compete for a playoff spot. I don't get the Jimmy G is going to be comeback player of the year, MVP, any of that nonsense. So I'm with you 100%. Take the Bucks as the pick them. They should be minus three here. Lots of line value. Next up, Sean, last of the late afternoon kicks. Fortunately for everyone, this is not the Sunday night game. The New York Giants head to Big D to take on the Zeke full Dallas Cowboys where Dallas is laying a touchdown minus 320 on the money line Giants plus 260 45 is the total I don't care what you have to say about the Giants Sean what the fuck are Dallas laying a touch laying a touchdown really real quick really one uh one other thing to keep in mind is uh one thing that does play into these Florida heats is when teams come in with colored uniforms the visitor team. Oh. so Ravens will have super dark colors the uh, 49ers will have super dark colors. That nugget courtesy of her boy, Walter Football. I like that. And, uh, yeah, so definitely and, – and the 49ers, especially if they end up being a dog, are kind of are – you, you went through that whole preview without mentioning uh, Kittle, too, so congratulations Kittle, to Kittle, he's fine, but he's – crazily overrated he put up good fantasy numbers and they're acting like he's Zach Ertz back to my g-men seven points tell me why it's way too many why is it way too many are you lay are you laying the seven here uh no I mean even though the Cowboys have won nine of the last 12 meetings um Eli Manning even though he's uh <laughs> horrible he is 20 and 8 ATS as an underdog of seven or more Traditionally, if it's a division game, I like to take uh, <clears throat> the dog catching the big number. I what I'll say positively about this Giants offense. Oh, I like this. Their offensive line is slightly better after watching some of their preseason play. It is slightly better. I still think they're going to struggle. They don't have uh, they sh they really don't have any pass catchers. Evan Ingram may be an interesting uh, DFS play, but Saquon Barkley, possibly the best athlete on the field, possibly. To me, this is really what the fuck's wrong with you. Well, you know, you got uh, Sterling Shepard possibly playing. Look out for him. To me, I'm just not going to back the Dallas Cowboys. That is a disgusting act. Since 2011. But uh, it really, and everyone's acting like the Cowboys' success is tied to whether or not Zeke plays. But I've I've mentioned it a million times. If you look at the splits and the and the numbers, it's Amari Cooper that's really uh, been the key to the Cowboys' success in their offense last year in particular. Now Amari Cooper will probably play. Oh, that foot injury is scary. But it's plantar fasciitis. Yep. And again, if you have a lot of free time on the gym and you're watching the NFL Network on a constant loop and you see guys warming up and you see the practice footage that they're releasing, and even in that practice footage that they're releasing, much like I study Cam Newton's throwing motion yep. and his inability to plan on his foot, even though he's 100%, I see the same thing out of uh, Amari Cooper. These guys, they play through the plantar fasciitis. However, they don't have any burst. And I just – I think – I think it's just going to be – It's it should be a game. Like, I, I just don't think the Giants get blown out. That's no, what I can give you. The Giants chance. will not get blown out. Uh, and if you're asking me for a total, these games tend to be low scoring, I feel like. so. Could be, a, you know, 23-20. Uh, inside Iggy, Sean, I yeah. think this defense is going to be pretty stout against the run this year. I think they're going to surprise some some people in their ability to, to slow Yeah, slow I, think the they'll, I think they'll struggle with teams that are really able to throw the ball and have dynamic pass catchers, which – I just don't think you can really say about the um, Cowboys with Cooper and his foot right now. I agree. Let's move on, Sean. Sunday night football. The Pittsburgh Steelers head to New England where the Patriots are a five-and-a-half-point favorite, minus 245 on the money line, plus 205 for the Steelers. 50-and-a-half is the total. We've seen the Patriots get off to slow starts before. This is the ultimate baggage revenge spot. Pittsburgh kind of flying under the radar. 
Bell and Brown out of town. That has to be good for the locker room. Uh, I'm kind of all in on the Steelers this year as well. And while I, I, I don't think you're going to get rich laying uh, or catch grabbing dogs when they come to Gillette Stadium, I'm going to take the Steelers plus the points here, Sean. Yeah, and the Pats traditionally, uh, they show up at Gillette and they show up on prime time. Tom Brady, 1911 ATS on Sunday Night Football. However, <clears throat> this just feels like the perfect scenario for the Steelers. Everyone's just riding uh, Baker Mayfield. You know, the media is just getting in line to suck Baker Mayfield off one at a time. And meanwhile, our boy Big Ben is just quietly off to the side. They're, the receivers coach passed away. Everyone rallied around him. They're saying they're going to make this season all about him. Juju uh, Smith-Schuster is going to have a really good season. I, I think the Pats defensive backfield, uh, still a couple questions at, at, at cornerback. Again, Brady and Belichick, they'll figure out how to, how to move the ball. Nikhil Harry, he's on IR. They'll figure something out. But I just think the Steelers, where they get in trouble is when they look ahead to the Patriots game and yeah. then look past other games. But this, this is their time. This They've is been game planning all, all month. Yeah. They they've had this game circled for the entire summer. I don't even know who they have week two, Doesn't but matter. I'm I'm looking to fade the Steelers oh, yeah. week two. But I think they're a bet on team, especially you saw Seattle at home. Oh, okay, that's gonna be a tough spot for you. But you've seen the Patriots struggle in September. I, I don't know what it is about the preseason or what. Uh, you know what it is, Sean? The new roster limits. Belichick doesn't care how good his team is week one. He cares how good his team is week 17, week 18, week yeah. 19. He just – this he's he uses September as an extended preseason to figure out, hey, what's going on with my team? Yeah. Who's going to play where? What kind of scheme should I be running? When can Gronk come back? All that good stuff. And I think this Bush kid's going to make the play. Going to make yep. the play. He looks good. He uh, Look for him, whether it's a strip sack, fumble recovery, INT, whatever. That Bush kid – Brady torn ACL. Uh, yeah, let's throw that in there as well. Brady Ryan, you, retirement. Predicted, you predicted Carson Wentz ACL being torn. Are you going to go out on a, an edge and, uh, it's a baby fucking wheel, man. I have been having weird. I, I have not wagered on any Patriots futures, which is nor normally it's always good to have a little of that. Cause they just make it every year. I, I do think, uh, I'll, here's my bold prediction. I, I do think Brady, Brady gets hurt at some point. Wow. Brady gets hurt at some point. Oh my God. He's fucking 42, man. Like, it's not going on forever. But all he uh, eats is strawberries. Avocado juice is not going to get it and done. <laughs> all right, Monday night All football. he eats is strawberries in his son's y face. You're, take <laughs> you're taking the Steelers, right? Well, real quick sidebar. I don't think enough people tweeted me about how awesome my joke was about excuses from the College Football Picks podcast. It was pretty good. It was an amazing joke. If you didn't hear it, you need to download it and then tweet me a compliment. I don't usually toot my own horn, Ryan, but sometimes uh, it, it may have flown under the radar because – to the contrary, Colby you was you you got it, but you get the show. But Colby was just plowing through <laughs> some of his uh, mediocre college. He was picks. getting very de de defensive. <laughs> it was it was odd. I just want you guys to know that I think he was he was worried we were going to let him go. Yeah, he's very he, he thinks we're performance based. I don't know. Monday Night Football, nothing better than the weird double kickoff. We have yeah. the four ten West Coast kick. Houston heads to New Orleans, where Houston is a seven and a half point. Seven now, seven point dog plus two fifty on the money line, minus three hundred for the Saints. Fifty two and a half is the total. Sean, I think you threw this out there. New Orleans, they struggle early. They've lost, I think, three of their sh three straight of their season openers. And Houston, this team should be good, not in the long term. Uh, there's certainly going to be a lot of questions. Laramie Tunsil, I I'm not 100 percent if he's going to start, but bringing him in there, Deshaun Watson's going to be at his healthiest. They still have DeAndre Hopkins. Um, they brought in Duke Johnson, who's uh, can catch some balls. I, I just think this this Houston team. Why this is? The, I think there's just so much on this Houston team to come out and really, really have a big game. So the uh, fact that this, out of all the spreads this week, this was the most surprising. My model really? had this. My Ooh. model had this game ranked at like four and a half. And this is one of the games that I circled because more money is – more tickets on the Saints, more money on the Texans. I think the number is just too Sharp big. money, Ryan. Where I, is it at? I, I, I would imagine this number will come down below seven. By well, Betsperts, when I put in my uh, pick for the free roll contest, I think I got Houston at seven and a half. I'm, I'm putting it in right now as we speak, and Houston is still seven and a half, Sean. Wow. I, I definitely had to crazy. think about some of these picks because the, the spreads are slightly different than what we're picking. 
Um, well, we're but, picking the the lines available over course. at mybookie.ag. Of course. So Houston, I, I think we're both on the dog here, right? We're gonna we're gonna bank on that that stroke. Everyone picking Drew Brees to finally get an MVP too. Oh, really? Every, uh, lots of I've been seeing those. Lots of Drew Brees for MVP chatter. Yeah, let's go. Let's go with Houston here. I don't. To your point, I don't think Bill, uh, Bill O'Brien can hold it down for the whole season, but I think there's definitely some excitement here. Uh, I definitely think seven points is way too many for Deshaun Watson, who's gonna take the baton from from Andrew Luck right the AFC South backdoor cover machine right yeah I I know you know this is hashtag uh DGENs oh, only little like play it. here I like it went in over on my my bookie account mm. put in a three-team parlor oh, okay all money lines oh, okay because there's gonna be a lot of live dogs week one <coughs> Pittsburgh Steelers okay plus 205 Houston Texans plus 250 Giants you slot the Giants in there Atlanta Falcons Plus oh, one sixty five. One hundred to win two thousand seven hundred and twenty eight dollars and eighty eight cents. I'm gonna do that same parlay but with the Giants. Let's see what it pays. It should pay pretty similar if it's all yeah. Oh, instead of the Falcons? Yeah. Okay, it's gonna be even crazier. Uh it pays thirty seven to one. So I'm gonna take I'll take a little piece of that. All right. I'll take a little piece of that. That's for gamblers only though. If DJ, you're, if you're, DJ if you're an investor, sure. yeah. If you're an investor, don't don't do that. But if you're Par- a DJ, parlays are bad. Don't do that. <laughs> but if you're looking to have some fun, parlays are fun. Uh, last Monday night kick, the late West Coast edition. Denver heads to Oakland to take on the Fighting Grudens, who are a Sean a one point home dog minus one hundred five on the money oh line. My God. Denver minus one fifteen forty three and a half is the total. Uh, th- honestly, this is the game that was the I have no fucking clue game of this week. Uh, really? I have a clue, and it's a strong clue. And the <laughs> clue is Vic Fangio against John Gruden. Derek Carr. Do you remember Derek Carr? Yep. The guy who threw the ball away in fourth down, the yep. guy who was scared to look downfield and get happy feet. Do you think going up against Bradley Chubb and Von Miller in Ooh. a Vic Fangio defense week one in prime time, do you think that's going to be a little scary? I do think it's yep. going to be scary. You know why? You know why John Gruden likes Nathan Peterson so much? And Peterman. Peterman. And uh, John Glennon. You know why he likes Nate Mike Peterson? Glennon. Mike Glennon. You're getting there, though. Mike Mid- Glennon, Nate <laughs> you're Peterman. In, you're in midseason form, Sean. You know why he likes all those guys? What's that? Because it's new pussy. Yep, it and is. And he's tired, he's tired of that Derek Carr pussy. He got worn out on it last season. He clearly hates his quarterback. Don't forget Deshaun Kaiser. Just picked him up. Yeah. I oh. are Nathan Peterman. He's like, he's like a junkie. He's the guy. He's... He's the married guy who cheats on his wife all the time, even though his wife's like his wife's like a solid seven, and he's just plowing through fours and fives yep. left, right, because he just can't help it. But is there a guy who loves football more than John Gruden? No, and that's why he should be watching football from a booth somewhere. Congratulations, men. Congratulations. <laughs> Knock on wood if you agree. Ka, ka, ka. Yeah, all right. I, I, I yeah, just no. don't. Hashtag fake. I group. love this Broncos defense against this Raiders offense. That I just love that matchup. And I know what you're saying. You're going to say Ryan or the opposite side of it. Joe Flacco on the road. You're crazy. Yep. Sure. There's that. But I think they have stuff that can help. Um, oh no, it's the Oakland Raiders. Yeah. Until I see this team, they're going to be playing on fucking sand. Yeah, they're horrible. You know who's great on sand? Philip Lindsay. Yeah, Guy Phillip. doesn't care about any conditions. <laughs> He's just going to roll over, dudes. I, I honestly, Joe Flacco hits one deep ball. That's all they need. I'm not a huge fan of Denver this year. I know you're a little higher than I am, but uh, yeah, I need John Gruden to win a game. I, I just need to see him deal with this team. Uh, yeah, Antonio Brown's there, sure. Great. Great. That That's about it, though. I, I, I think the defense for the Broncos is the story here. I think Derek Carr is flustered, and you know he's probably a little uncomfortable that he can't show off his guns, <laughs> having to wear a full uniform with <laughs> sleeves. Uh, yeah, let's lay the points. Let's lay the road chalk here, Sean. It's time. Let's do it. Oh. Happy well, we do. Are, are we bringing uh, Tom Green on? Oh, yes. Before we give out our lock dog tees, uh, let's take a quick moment to chat with my old man, the real Tom Green. Joining us on the line here to talk NFC East and the Philadelphia Eagles, Tom Green, a.k.a. the real Tom Green, a.k.a. my dad. Dad, what's happening? How much? How you doing, Sean? Ryan, what's going on? football it's getting getting jacked up for the uh, first weekend of football yeah. nfc east absolutely this is like uh first time of the year for me that little bit of uh, downtime in between the flyers and the start of uh, 
mini camp, so I'm chomping at the bit for it. I don't know if you uh, <clears throat> saw that, Dad, but they just uh, breaking news. Zeke Elliott just got paid highest uh, paid running back of all time. What's your take on Ezekiel Elliott and, more importantly, the Dallas Cowboys? Well, I think it's obvious. Uh, Jerry Jones continues to be our best player down there. I like the way he's handling the personnel situation. He's totally going to overload him cap-wise. And I'll just come down to Zeke, which we can stop. I mean, come on. We've got Fletcher Cox. we got uh, just a stud line. and Malik Jackson. And I, don't think, I don't think their O-line's what it's all cracked up to be. So he still has to sign two more superstars, and there's going to be some resentment, and <laughs> he probably won't be ready, and he'll get hurt, or, you know, it's going to be – I'm not worried about Zeke. I, I and black- really, the, the rest of the NFC East is, you know, Sheli, I hope I think Sheila's going to have a breakout year this way, by the way. <laughs> Ryan. Well, I he's going to break uh, out of the league? I think that <laughs> – <laughs> I think it's smart for them to keep playing them. Uh, yeah, you want so that you want that, that veteran <laughs> presence at the QB position for the Giants. Help help explain <laughs> Daniel Jones how to how to go four and mm-hmm. whatever sixteen in your last twenty against the uh, Eagles. I'm sorry, I blacked right. out. Are we doing the uh, NFC East preview again, Sean? <laughs> or is this just the Eagles preview? I, uh, it's always it's always nice to check in with my dad. After all. Yeah, well, you... no, I mean, I, I really feel good about the Eagles, not just because of their roster, but who else in NFC East is, is going to do anything this year? Nine years. The force, do... the force kids are going nowhere. <laughs> I mean, so we're in the playoffs. And it's just a matter of, uh, you know, making our run to the Super Bowl and repeating. What could go repeating, wrong, but... What yeah. could go wrong? What could, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> There's no way you're possibly jinxing it. <laughs> What's no, your, uh, well, I, I mean, I don't want to get too exuberant here. Yeah. So. Carson Wentz is going to slip on some bison meat and throw out his back. <laughs> no, 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 no. Everybody, honestly, Nick Foles was more prone to injury yeah. you know, over that's his the career. Other, it's, that's it's the other thing. A, when everyone, I hear that all the time. Yeah, when everyone talks about Carson Wentz and his injury history, Nick Foles has never played 16 games. So if you want to, <laughs> if you want to critique Carson Wentz for that, that's – that's fine, but yeah. sounds like they have a lot in common. Yeah, the most, the most, uh, the most Foles has ever played in a season is eleven games. I, I think they'll be all right down in Jackson. He's playing from behind. He's got that extra weight around the midsection. It throws him off. Yeah. His, his body chemistry is he's got, not made for it. He's gonna have some lower back issues down the line. All right, yeah. Dad. What uh, what do you think of the uh, what do you think of the Eagles Redskins game? The lines at minus nine and a half. Which way are you going here? Well, I think that still no, that's my lock. I, I think the Eagles are <laughs> are locked locked and loaded, and uh, it's just going to be nuts. I mean, I don't know how you're going to defend against those two tight ends and and a running game and and a really good offensive line. Is that uh, is that game in uh, Philly or or uh, down there? In Philly. I think, yeah, it's in Philly. I mean, come on. I I don't see any reason why we can't run all over them. Yeah, well, I mean nine well, and well, a half is a lot, but Tom, I, I guess gotta, when you say when you say lock, you're you're including the points. Yeah, lock against yeah, the but, spread. Uh, we yeah. are yes, we are a gambling podcast. So I know <laughs> I know Tom, you're a big Meek Mill guy. Will he be at the game? Do you factor this into your handicapping? <laughs> Who's that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, come on, <laughs> Philadelphia strong. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a rapper from. Uh, <laughs> from philadelphia oh, dad doesn't, yeah, really, no, no. doesn't really follow do, rap I, I not, do not, rap. not surprised <laughs> yeah. all right dad uh well thanks as always for calling in the podcast well sean nine yeah. years we've been doing this we need that record prediction oh yes Eagles. yeah give us the record all right no no i'll give you a prediction i see the eagles at 13 and 3 and i see them going to the super bowl and prevailing in the super bowl oh who are, wow. who are they gonna beat in the super right. bowl dad that's the big question uh, I don't think it's going to be the Patriots. I really don't. And uh, I don't know. I, I got a feeling they've kind of hit their peak in, in previous. I, I just don't see them keeping that formula together. I, I think they'll be good, but I don't know. I haven't, I'm not that close to AFC, maybe the Chargers. I don't know who. I'm just mostly an NFC East guy. And then uh, – <laughs> 
And then as I get, and I see the picture, you know, clearing up, I start following AFC teams or whatever. All Whoever's right. in the line of our playoff path. So we'll, with, we'll go with the, we'll go with Chiefs for your AFC team. A, a very conservative yeah. prediction, I can tell. Thirteen and three is always the conservative. <laughs> Fourteen and two, fifteen it's and not one. A homer. That's the confidence. That would prediction. be a homer. Would be fifteen and one. I, I like that. You slide yeah. in three losses there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's. Uh, oh, who did the uh, Chiefs just pick up? I think somebody. Oh, didn't McCoy go there? Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I guess it could be the Chiefs. That'll be a little storyline in the Super Bowl this year. Uh, all right. That's a long, maybe a long shot because I don't think he'll last. But all right, all right, Ed. We'll have fun, Good luck, uh, you guys. Have fun uh, and... on vacation. Thanks for calling in. And yeah, uh, no, I gotta can... find the Eagles Bar in Hako here. Yeah, it's my dad's down in Costa Rica. The one Rica. Uh, we go to is under remodeling, so I got to do my surveillance in the next few days. So I'm ready for Sunday. Uh, Dad, where can the uh, where can people uh, where can people find you online? What's your what's your untapped profile? Untapped, uh, <laughs> I think it might be Green 5011, but I'm big on Untapped. That's where you got to connect with me. So we we got to get Tom on so. BetSpurt so we can follow his picks this year. Yeah. Dad, I, I sent you the uh, link for the free contest, so sign up for oh, that. Okay. And we can, we yeah, can track your I'm going to sign up for that, and, uh, yeah, I'll get my picks in, but I'm, I'm psyched. All right. Awesome, Dad. Thanks. Have, a, have, right. have fun down there. Okay, guys. Worst Take of luck care. to your Eagles. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's, let's go, birds. Go, birds. <laughs> and now, time for the lock dog tease, courtesy of mybookie.ag, promo code SGP. Kramer, one more thing to throw out. And uh, this was an idea created by one of our uh, listeners, writers, contributors, mm. Patrick Fisher. Oh. The uh, Let It Ride Twitter challenge. Okay. So, what we're going to do is uh, we'll put both of our locks, maybe Pina, Colby, We'll run a little poll on Twitter, and you select which lock you like the best, and you retweet it. And you're then, the listener, the collective listener. Yes, you the collective listener. And then on uh, – well, I don't know how we'll do it. Normally, we'll do it on the pregame Periscope. Yep. We'll announce the winner. Okay. And uh, if, if the lock hits, you'll get $100. And, uh, yeah, and then maybe we'll figure out letting it ride. The following week, you can pick – or I don't know. Maybe it should be better if it's just a new person every week. Yeah, we can figure it out. But we'll call it right now. We'll just call it the lock, the Twitter lock challenge. So stay tuned. Follow us at Gambling Podcast for that information. Hashtag DGens only. Hashtag DGens only. Sean, do I go first? Do you go first? How do we do this? Uh, you can go first. You know what we're doing? Live show Thursday night at the Legacy Stadium. I'm all in on Aaron Rodgers. Wow, entering a Thursday mode. night lock. You know what? I want to give out a Thursday night lock so when I cash it, I can give you a bonus lock for the weekend. <laughs> I just I love I, I'm give me the points with Aaron Rodgers here Green Bay plus three for my dog. There's some nice dogs on the table here, but are you gonna allow? What what are the parameters here again, Sean? How many how many? Can I do a one twenty? Ah, uh, that's kind of pussy, dude. One sixty? How's that? I say sound? one one forty and above, one fifty and above. 150 and above. Jacksonville yeah. shocks the world plus one sixty. Wow. Okay. God loves Jags. I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm coming out hot, and for my tease, was it plus one sixty? You said plus right? one sixty. I almost threw Pittsburgh in there, but I'm taking this Jags home team. I think they they shocked the world there. For my tease, let's uh let let's let's keep it simple, Sean. Let's tease the Chargers down to a half. Okay. Let's tease Baltimore. San Diego Super Chargers charge. Let's tease Baltimore down to one. Mm. And for the last leg of my tease, I don't have a lot of good line value propositions. I just think Cincinnati's going to be garbage. Give me Seattle minus three and a half. Okay. All right. Well, here's what I got to go. My lock. Bucks, baby. Bucks Nation. I Easy like money. My dog. Oh, oh. Texans plus 250. Mm. The Saints are bad early. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to keep riding it. For my tease, give me the Broncos catching five. Uh, don't need key numbers when you're facing Gruden. Chargers minus a half. And for the final leg, yeah, give me the Steelers plus eleven and a half. They can put up some points. I considered that. That would be the that would be what I would what I would do if I had a, had a tease that game. 
Oh my God, we're done. Week one oh. in the books. Man, those smelling salts. I, I'm in. <laughs> I, I'm I'm with Pina. Why aren't people doing this every morning? We're taking them to Las Vegas. I'm done with coffee. <laughs> Goodbye, coffee. Hello, smelling salts. Make sure you enter the free roll football contest, sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Again, get paid over at mybookie.ag, promo code SGP. Rate, review, and share on iTunes. Come on, guys. All this free content, all this free money we're giving away. Yeah. All you got to do, man, is just throw us a five-star review and say something funny. You know, don't get too crass because then the Nazis over at uh, Apple will uh, delist your review. So <laughs> keep it funny, keep it clean, and, uh, you know, have some fun, man. It's it's it, we, we really appreciate it. And follow uh, me on BetSperts. Wow. All my, my NFL picks are locked in, baby. I'm in the contest. I got my picks locked in. Ready to go. Ready to go. Ready to rock. Ready to roll. And uh, if you want to get in our DraftKings League, tweet us at Gambling Podcasts and uh, make sure you redeposit. Use our promo code SGP for the free roll, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you guys for making this, what, our ninth season, picking every game against the spread. It's a joy. It's a pleasure. And can't wait for the 2019 NFL season for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. You can follow me on Instagram at Kramer Centric. Let it ride.